Today on the menu is a fantastic dessert, a uh, sweet pastry that is guaranteed to tickle the sweet tooth of just about anybody who tries it. It's lemon cream cheese bars, and we have everything we need right in front of us to make it happen. Uh, now this is going to happen in three phases because of the recipe. The first phase will be the crust, the second phase will be the cream cheese filling, and the third phase will be the lemon custard uh, that's on top. And we'll start with the crust. Now the first thing we'll do is measure out our dry ingredients, which starts with two cups of flour. And to measure the flour, I use the old uh, dip and sweep method. I take a one cup measure, and by the way, I've got a little piece of wax paper here. I find this very handy when measuring and distributing flours into recipes. You'll see why very shortly. Um, I will dip into the flour and make sure that there's plenty more than necessary to overflow the top of the cup. That's the dip, now the sweep. I take a knife, a butter knife, this just happens to be an offset spatula, but uh, to make sure it's correct, I'll just sweep it off at the rim back into the container. And there you have a very faithful representation of one cup. I'll put that right onto the wax paper. And then, just a second time, since it's two cups, dip and sweep again. There you have accurately measured two cups. Now for the wax paper, aside from picking up any little spills that might have happened uh, on there and keeping your workspace nice, it makes a very nice way to funnel in the ingredients into your mixer bowl without having it spill all over the place. Just fits right in there. And voila, it's all in. Next, we're going to spoon out half a cup of powdered sugar. Now, I'll just put that cup right on top of that uh, wax paper. And this powdered sugar is not in a canister. It's just pretty much straight out of the box as it came from the grocery store. So, I'm tapping that in. And we'll still want to do the, the sweep portion. Overfill it. That's fine. Then... Sweep it off to level. There's your half cup, which can go directly into your mixing bowl. But now, just take the wax paper, curl it back up, and it very easily goes right back in the box that it came out of. No mas, no fuss. Next we have a half a cup of butter, represented by two sticks. And these are chilled, uh, fairly uh, hard, not melted or mushy just yet, which is important. So put it out, and I take just a little uh, vegetable chopper here, and it's about as long as the stick of butter itself, and we'll split it right down the middle. The two halves, put those back together and turn them. 90 degrees and do the exact same thing again. So now you've got four sticks. Put those back together and chop those four sticks into a small chunk. And then that butter goes right back in to the mixing bowl with the flour and powdered sugar. Okay, so into the bowl have gone two complete sticks of butter cubed up as I just demonstrated. Now lift the bowl. Now, a stand mixer is a very, very strong motor designed to force its way through the toughest of doughs and batters, and it can spin. Now it's very crucial at this point, unless you want a colossal mess with flour flying all over your kitchen and surrounding surfaces. Do not move the power lever past the very first lowest stir for the first couple of minutes until that butter and flour has engaged each other. Like this. Slow.
Now we're not really trying to create a dough here. What we're doing is to try to create layers of flour upon butter, upon flour, upon butter, and flour and butter. That way, uh, when it bakes, that's what makes a uh, pastry puff up those various layers. So we're not trying to make it all homogenized. We want to keep the butter with its characteristics uh, layered throughout that flour. That's why we want it cold so it doesn't melt and just absorb the flour. We want it to uh, enrobe itself in the flour, but not become the same as. All right, so at that point, now that it's uh, starting to get some cohesion, I'm gonna crank up the speed just one more notch. All right, that seems to be okay without throwing flour, so I'm gonna give it one more notch. And we'll watch it for a moment to uh, look for the consistency we're looking for. Uh, the big chunks of butter are slowly becoming smaller and flatter and more spread out, which is fine. Uh, we're going to watch this, and we don't want those chunks to get any smaller than, say, maybe the size of a pea on your dinner plate. But we don't want them, you know, hugely large that you can just see them right away. Now, kind of a crumble effect. Not a cohesive dough, uh, but a, a, a crumble that we'll put together with some pressure in the bottom of the pan to make just a delightful crust. It's been going for a couple of minutes, and this is starting to look really good. The, the pieces are, if there are large pieces, they're easily crumbled, right? They're not uh, sticky like uh, dough. That's just about right. So when it's barely starting to uh, cling together and hold to itself, that's when we want to pan it. Now in the meantime, I've been preheating the oven. It's at a nice toasty 350 degrees, and that's what it's going to be throughout all three phases of this recipe. So let's pan it up. Okay, what I have here is a fairly large size glass baking dish. It's at least 15 inches long and probably 10 and a half across. Um, now that dimension is kind of important. Um, I have made it in smaller pans and you can do it, but it makes each of the layers kind of thicker than it should be. It takes longer to cook and a longer time to set, so I found this dimension makes them just right. So basically, you've got all these little crumbles of flour and butter that have come together in your mixing bowl, so just pour them all directly into the glass pan. All that stuff out of there. And then this is going to be our crust, and this is where you have fun. Okay, of course we know your hands are already immaculately clean and freshly washed. Just kind of even it out a bit and start kind of hand mashing it down. And fill in where there are gaps. Just push that dough around to fill up any holes you see and just work your way all over the pan into the corners on the sides throughout giving it a good mash and if you see holes like particularly here just kinda push the sides together fill it up and it's great that it has you know little <laughs> fingerprints on it because you want actually some texture to help it grab on and adhere to the next layer, which is the cream cheese layer that'll go on top of that. So, you don't have to get too fussy with it, just make sure there aren't big holes in the landscape there. And when you don't see any more glass at the bottom of the pan, then we're just about ready to go into the oven <laughs> after I clean up this mess that I just spilled. But anyway, that's it. That's how it looks right before the oven. So as I mentioned, that oven is set for 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll just take this crust and pop it right in, right near the center of the oven. And this will cook probably between 14 and 16 minutes. We'll check it after 10 minutes to see how it's doing at that point. Um, if it's puffing up, we might need to give it a little prick with a fork to let the uh, steam and air out of it to, so it flattens back down. But otherwise, we're just going to cook it till it's just set and slightly turning brown. 
All right, so we've washed and dried our mixing bowl and uh, the beater paddle, and we're going for the cream cheese layer now. Uh, so this is your standard, I believe, eight ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese right into the mixing bowl. And I have got one half a cup of powdered sugar, or confectioner's sugar. Two tablespoons of flour that have been measured the same way as the... Uh, the larger portions of flour were by scooping it up and sweeping it off level with the top of the spoon. Two tablespoons of flour. And here I have two eggs. Now I always, when I'm adding eggs to a batter, I always crack them into a bowl first because I don't want eggshell accidentally getting in there. So I can make sure there's no eggshell here. We're fine. And put it right in. <laughs> ah, the joys of live to tape. Two eggs, cream cheese, two tablespoons of flour, half a cup of powdered sugar, and we're ready to blend. Now once again with this, we are going to start at the very slowest speed, just one notch in to get this barely moving around. Now as those ingredients start to meld a little bit together, we'll pick up the speed. Try to get it so that it has enough centrifugal force to push everything away from the paddle and into the mix. Now we want to keep going with this several minutes, maybe four or five minutes until this is all smooth and creamy and pours like a thick milkshake. After a couple of minutes, you'll see it getting uh, somewhat homogenized, but you'll want to stop it, lower the bowl, and scrape the sides, because there's some stuff that's not quite getting into the mix, so just kind of push it all down into the depths of the bowl. Go all the way around and get those little pieces of cream cheese and sugar and whatnot that's stuck up on the wall, and uh, scrape it on off the beater element as well, as best you can there, so that it's all back down into the center of the bowl. Re-raise it and continue blending. So nice and smooth. So it's getting there. It's a little bit closer. Uh, but before we go to any further, I'm going to put one more ingredient. This is one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Pop that into the mix. Start it slow and then bring it back up to a whipping speed. Okay, our crust was in the oven for just at 15 minutes and it's come out and it looks like that. It's pretty well set, it's not jiggly anywhere. Slightly brown, just very slightly brown around the edges, but not hard and crispy. And that's fine because it's gonna cook in the oven two more times, so we don't want it totally done now. But at this point, we take our cream cheese mixture Scrape down the sides of the bowl, it's all pretty smooth here, and we're just going to put that right on top of the crust, pour it straight in. And I'll pour it onto my spoon so it doesn't make a big splat or break the crust if it's tender in some place. I'm going to pour it straight out. It's a little hard to do this reverse from myself so the camera can see what's happening. All right, once all that's out of there, just kind of use your spatula to gently coax it around to fill in all the space from side to side, from end to end. Don't press down too hard because you don't want to really disturb the texture of that crust. You really want it to hold on and cling to this layer. So just keep going from the center and spreading outwards, gently, gently, until it reaches the edge. Now this will kind of level out in the oven, 
but not completely so it does need our help at this point so once you've seen that it's all at the edges just kind of give it a back and forth up and down to make sure that everything is pretty much as evenly distributed as you can make it not too thick or too deep in parts especially in the centers and that is pretty darn good now this is going to go back into the oven for well let's say six or seven minutes to start off with and we'll check it uh, we want this to be partially set right now if you kind of move it back and forth you can see it jiggling uh, you don't want any of that liquid motion to it when it's set so 350 degree oven check in in six to seven minutes so that's in the oven uh, getting set and now we're going to start working on the third and final layer the lemon custard layer and it starts off with four eggs which i've cracked into a bowl so i'll put those right into the mixing bowl excuse my arm there this is one quarter cup of flour using that dip and sweep method and now we need two cups of granulated sugar and this can, uh, container is a little narrow to dip that cup in there so I'll just pour it out over wax paper there's one cup and the second will follow just exactly now I've actually run out of granulated sugar before I got my, to my uh, two full cups but that doesn't matter it doesn't make any difference because I'll just fill out the rest with the powdered sugar and scooping level is normal so I'd say that's four-fifths granulated one-fifth powdered and then just use the wax paper again to return it back to its container now this recipe calls for a teaspoon of grated lemon peel now I have some fresh lemons here and the way to get the peel is through the use of this little gadget a microplane grater now I uh, the thing about getting the lemon peel the zest is the colored part the outside colored part of the skin now these have been rinsed um, ahead but uh, beneath the yellow is a white layer of pith and we don't want that white layer it's fibrous and kind of bitter and will spoil the taste we only want the zest the outside of the skin which has all those oils that just say wow citrus and so what we want to do is kind of move back and forth this way across the grater but as we do slowly rotate up the fruit so that it will get it from top to bottom like that let me show you don't linger in any one place you can see it's kind of lighter there and then turn it ever so slightly and do it again then turn it and rotate it up top to bottom keep that rotating going and this microplane grater just makes very 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 thin slices I can't see into the camera right now so I don't know if you can actually see it on the plate but it's adding up there and we've got a little bit that always gets stuck under the bottom of the grater and that's easy enough just push it on out with a spoon or a spatula or blade whatever you have but here's a very very nice lemon zest and that goes right into your mixing bowl as well now when all your dry ingredients are in the mixing bowl take those, that lemon that you zested cut it in half squeeze out the juice and take several more and squeeze out their juice and strain them until you've got one quarter cup or two ounces of lemon juice do not put this in now we're going to dribble it slowly so your eggs and all the other ingredients are in here and again just start off on the very slowest speed to get it incorporated Once it starts to look fairly well blended with so that you can't see a lot of dry ingredients and kick up the pace.
and as this turns uh, smoother and creamier, it'll start to get a kind of a lighter complexion to it. it started off kind of mustard yellow looking, but now it's uh, lighter and lighter, getting some air stuck in there. We're going to slowly, slowly, not at all at the same time, but slowly drizzle in the two ounces of lemon juice. Let each little dribble have a chance to incorporate before the next little dribble goes in. There we go. And let that last few drops have a chance to swirl around and get to know each other. And this essentially is going to be a lemon custard that sits on top of the rest of the lemon bars. We'll give that just a couple more seconds to smooth out and we'll put on our last layer. All right, that lemon custard mix is in the mixing bowl right here. In the meantime, our second layer has come out of the oven. It's been out for a while. It was only in there about maybe seven or eight minutes. I did have to check it once and it wasn't quite ready, but... It's cool to the touch now, but you see, if I move this around, this layer is solid. It doesn't move. Uh, but before I took it out of the oven, if you move it and it waves like a California waterbed, then give it a little more time. But this is uh, stout enough to take on our next layer, which is the lemon custard. So again, I'll pour it over the spoon so it doesn't make a huge splat on top of that layer. Get it as evenly distributed as you can. And of course, get out every little, little bitty, bitty bit of goodness out of your mixing bowl, for goodness sake. Okay, and that pretty well self-spread pretty evenly all by itself without help from us. So, just like that, it's going right back into that 350 degree oven. Okay, and these are our lemon bars coming out of the oven. You'll notice that part of it is puffed up a little bit and that's okay. That is uh, bound to happen. But as it cools off here on the table, that will flatten back down to its, uh, so that it matches the rest of it. Won't look like that. Now, just to let you know, the recipe says to bake this layer for 15 minutes at 350 degrees. That is never really long enough, I don't think, uh, for me. I checked it at 15 minutes. It was not browned at all. It was still white. And if you gave it just the slightest little bit of jiggle, you'd see waves of liquid rolling across like a pebble and splashed in a pond. At 20 minutes, it had just started to brown a little bit. At 25 minutes, it still had a little jiggle in the center, but the 28 minutes is where I found this to be perfect. Now I'm telling you this because there is no set time for it. There is a set doneness. Um, so what works in my oven at this level of humidity, at this temperature, at how that oven is regulated, it's going to be one thing and something different in yours. So the thing is just to watch it and watch for the signs. You don't want it waving you want it solid so this custard layer is now set and as you can see that's already starting to uh, go back down now the final bit to do is to add a little dusting of powdered sugar on top now I have this just a uh, wire mesh sieve strainer powdered sugar again and I'm just going to take like a big heaping tablespoon or so of it and put it right into that strainer Okay, now I'll take the spoon and just lightly tap the strainer to get a good dusting all around the top. Just make a little snow scene. Make it so that it's fairly evenly covered. And there we have it, lemon bars. We're going to want to let this cool down completely 
for oh, probably at least 25 minutes, possibly longer. But once it's cool, then we will slice it all up into uh, the portions. Now the way I do it, this is a long pan. I will take the knife and slice it long ways here and then long ways here. So I've got three long strips that run the length of the pan. Then we'll take and do very narrow strips across ways. So maybe you've got 12 divisions this way. So 12 and 3, you'll have like oh, 36 or so little finger food size portions. And there it is after it's been all portioned out. You've got two servings on a plate here. You can decorate it with a little sprig of mint or basil if you like. And uh, it's just great. Get powdery sugar top. Uh, lemony sweet custard top layer, a middle layer of cream cheese, and on the bottom a delicious flaky pastry crust. And how does it taste? Mmm! Man, I guarantee you this is not going to last long around your house. It's going to go quick, so plan on making it frequently. Well listen, thanks for joining us. If you like what you've seen here, click like on uh, whatever venue you're using to view it. Uh, like our Facebook page at Too Hoot to Handle. Or subscribe. Subscribe if you want to see more videos coming from us. And even more of a favor to us would be to share this video with your friends and neighbors. Alright, that's it for now. Come back again to Too Hoot to Handle to see what's cooking.